Yes, I'm still keeping isopods. So, time for a little recap and update, I guess. Welcome to Peppers and Glowworms, a channel dedicated to hot chili peppers and coldly glowing glowworms. <coughs> In spring of 2020, when lockdown and other restrictions were prevalent in my area, I took extended walks and collected isopods. From that, I started a colony of Armadillidium vulgare. I even submitted a video of this culture to the Supreme Gecko's isopod setup reviews. Some feeding videos were made and I started, or rather tried, to select and breed them for color. Interestingly, pseudoscorpions appeared all by themselves in the isopod bin. I started a separate culture with the most colorful ones so far, and although this culture was invaded by a species of small red spider through my fault, the offspring of the colorful ones survived quite well. Quick side note, those spiders are still from that accidental invert communal from 2019 that started from some critters hitching a ride on a turtle vine plant. The dwarf striped isopods, Nagurus cristatus, uh, from there did not make it through the early 2020s. Their enclosure dried out when I could not reach it due to complications to travel at those times. But back to Armadillidium vulgare. I had named the colorful ones Guldenburger. They were like a high yellow variety. However, the colorful selection ended up producing almost only plain black individuals. Weird. So I collected all the remaining high expression individuals from the big composting container where I put chili clippings algae, etc. for decomposition obviously, and started a new culture with them and the offspring of the colorful ones. So I took them away from the spiders. I have observed that the colorful individuals seem to have a higher mortality, also in this new culture, sadly. So I guess there will be no real Guldenburgers after all. But I'll keep the culture running for now. Maybe the colors will reappear in later generations. Yeah, and uh, this is also basically all that is left from the breeding stock. They have almost died out in the big composting container. Why? Well, perhaps those have something to do with it. In late 2020, when uh, collecting some leaf litter and white rotten wood, I also picked up a few new isopods. I came across a site where there were isopods of the white and red calico morph. Those were not very strong phenotypes though, and I ended up simply adding them to the big composting container. I did not make any videos about them and only took this one little photograph in early 2021. I think the species is Porcilio scaba, but I did not properly ID them yet. Anyway, they ended up apparently outcompeting the Armadillidium vulgare, or maybe they were better at evading the centipedes that also showed up in the big composting container. The pseudoscorpions also disappeared. Hmm. And these uh, probable Porcelio scaba really seem much more protein hungry. So uh, maybe. Yum, 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 yum. Hmm? So I collected the most high expression individuals that I could find, although these may all be female due to the trait possibly being sex linked, um, and started a new culture. And babies uh, soon showed up, indeed. So either if the females were fertilized already, or uh, there are males and females among the high expression individuals. We'll see in the future, I guess. I dubbed this new strain the Little Great Devourer. Maybe they can help me to process some of the more fleshy uh, waste biomass into chili fertilizer. 
An attempt to employ Dermistead beetles for that purpose uh, did not work out. Another video that was never published. Once the colony has grown a bit, I plan to do some of those will it isopod videos uh, with them again, although they uh, seem to be a bit more shy than Amodilidium vulgare, and I'm not as often out and about, I think. But we shall see. That's it for now. Goodbye.